What is going on, everybody? Jumbo Thick here. We are back with more Emberfield Whispers from the Stars. I'm, of course, GM, your DM for the night, Mr. Jumbo Thick. We are joined by the full cast and crew of uh, Emberfell. We, we still don't have a name yet. It's been a long time and we still don't have a name yet. So I guess we're just going to be just the, the, our, just the, the, crew. the crew, just the crew, just the crew. for now. But uh, let's do a brief introductions so we can get into the uh, the thick of it, as it was. Uh, let's start with Kayla. I swear I'm never ready and I'm always first. <clears throat> cool. uh, <laughs> Hello, I play the role of Delry, a uh, former elf turned in here, as you know, barbarian, um, can't control who she bites sometimes, even if it is a friendly teammate. No big deal. Um, yeah, and no one really knows in the party, no one knows her background yet, but uh, she is on the run from a husband, per se. That's, that's what we got going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Getting some uh, some J-Lo vibes from that, that little, no one else gets it? No, okay, whatever. No. Um, Fine. It was a it was a bad movie from the early two thousands. Um, let's go to the one and only Jumbo Smooth at this point. Hello everyone. I am Jumbo Smooth. I'll be playing the role of Rogar, son of Amu, this evening. He's a seven foot five, four hundred pound dragonborn from the Great White North, and he is searching for his father's uh, Faja. And uh, Faja. yes. Um, he has he's only had one kind of clue possibly that uh um a woman um a female dragonborn named by the name of sinsu um who is was a member of his clan um, was seen speaking to a to a practitioner who unfortunately died before we could interrogate him so okay. not much else has been heard um so looking forward to maybe getting another clue get some clues Speaking of clues, Doobie 209, Alan. I'm being distracted. What's going on, everybody? Uh, my name is Alan, and I'm playing Tristan Burrell, the high elf time wizard. Uh, that's all I got. That's all he's got. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm got. at 10 health right now. 10 health. Speaking of somebody at less than 10 health, Dan Decker picking it up. Oh, uh, listen here now. Yep. <laughs> Moog Brajah. Dan Decker playing Moog Brajah, the heir of Cloud. Uh, currently, uh, well, will be making death saves very soon. And uh, anyway, Moog, uh, for the time being, is an eight foot uh, bugbear. Yes, he is. Uh, he's a fighter. And uh, his original task was to uh, track down one noble Breverak. Uh, but um, that, that adventure played out. So now I'm currently uh, on the hunt looking for clues to find my lost cousin. Uh, last scene heading uh, somewhere towards the uh, what is it, the Twilight's Horizon. So you don't know right that now. yet, Moog. Damn it, Moog. <laughs> sorry. Damn it, Moog. You don't oh, know that yet. Sorry, I don't know that. What is that? I don't, you don't even know, know what that. that is. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, you don't know that. No, Andrea. Hi, I'm Andrea, and I'm playing Zuna Lin, who is the petite drow male bard mm -hmm. and who has a very big mouth and. Mm -hmm is in search of a good story and seems to have found one. He definitely has found one indeed. So last we left off, the uh, the party here, the crew, had found themselves after escaping from the um, desolation of the Hive Tunnels. Uh, after retrieving Gilbert and Yarla, um, the daughter and grandson of Mad Udville, you had decided to confront the crazy old codger and Upon entering his ramshackle abode near the ruins of Castle Gatebreaker, you found none other than Bors and his faithful ward present as you attempted to, uh, uh, let's just say, um, retrieve your just reward for performing the task that you had no proof of performing, as he claimed, feigned innocence as it was that he had no idea what you were doing, that you were doing it. The old man, unfortunately, during the heat of the argument and the confrontation that was coming, supposedly just died, fell over dead right there 
in his hut, all of you witnessing it, and as soon as it happened, the flocks of birds, the foul crigeons that have infested Castle Gate Gatebreaker for uh, decades at this point, as far as most of the people of Conwich know, began to swarm the outside of this establishment, attempting to break in as best they could. You decided to move deeper into the uh, the old man's house. There only being two rooms, finding a more fortifiable room to try to possibly weather out the storm when you realize that it might be impossible to do so, at least without a, a bloody, bloody fight. However, Trist, with the sharp eyes, discovered a, a, a secret passage of sorts, a skip between um, place to place, as it was revealed that there was a hidden chamber beneath Gilbert's um, bed, bedside that transported you to a hidden room that he had been um, doing things in. You found that the young man, who's only supposed to be around, looks to be about seven years old, um, possibly only a year old, uh, real time. Regardless though, you discovered a great many things down here, including books, several items. Some of you very intimately familiar with them, Moog. <clears throat> um, and a rather hefty sum of gold ingots that you had recovered. A lot of gold bars, and we will discuss that at a later time. However, you found a exit from this room that actually popped you out next to the barn that you had investigated previously. The barn that Matt Udvil had started buying up ox for, for some unknown reason. Who knows? He said he was starting, he was going to start an actual farm. He was going to start milking these ox, perhaps. Who knows what he was doing? The barn was previously heavily um, warded with uh, with magics, um, keeping uh, people out or perhaps keeping something in, as you found out, as several of the wards had apparently begun to fade with the death of their caster. And you made your way inside. Um, Moog, with his new, um, let's just call it his new, uh, his new dark passenger, had seen a glimpse down to the bottom of the barn as you were on a second uh, second floor, a, a glimpse of young Gilbert performing some kind of ritual. Um, he appeared to be disguised behind an illusion that somehow Moog saw through. Strange indeed. Regardless though, you all made your way inside and in doing so confronted not only Gilbert, but a horror from possibly beyond the stars that was being kept in this barn. Who knows its origin or anything else of that sorts? You don't know yet. You do know that um, Moog killed Gilbert, put a bolt through the young man's head, cling through, killed him instantly. And as, as soon as he did, the creature went berserk, smashed its way out of the barn due to the failing wards, um, hit Moog in the chest. Uh, knocking him unconscious nearly through one of the walls and began to flee towards Conwich. All the while, none of you have actually seen the physical creature. It was briefly lit up by Zoom, by um, her uh, his fairy fire kind of spell, but that was just more of an outline. Um, this entire time, it has been invisible and is remaining so. It is fleeing in the direction of Conwich. So, we are going to ba -ba -ba -ba. Wasn't Rogar's spear sticking out of it? It was, however, we will get to can that in a moment as well. Okay. He did he yeah, he threw a javelin. He had planted oh, okay. a javelin inside of it. So, can we not see the javelin? Okay. However, I am going to need everyone to re-roll me initiative please because we are starting a technically a it's not exactly the same combat this is something a little different even even those who are unconscious yes even those that are unconscious just in case you come to wakefulness at some point in the next turn and i imagine i'm disadvantaged still right 
Um, yes, if you have any exhaustion, yeah, you still have disadvantage. So I've got a nine for Rogar. Got a 11 for Zoom. Let me re-roll mine because I roll with advantage, so I should be rolling straight. Oh, okay. Sorry. 12 for Valerie. And... Yeah, critical fail. <laughs> a four. <laughs> a four. Uh, Trist, I didn't see yours. What was it nine. real fast? A nine? There we go. There we go. This will just give me a good idea of everything. Okay. So, as the creature is fleeing, we're entering into almost more of a cinematic. This is going to be more of a, a skill-based challenge to see if you can keep up with the creature at this point because it is moving exceptional speed it is invisible you can see it is not attempting to hide itself it's massive if you'll remember from the brief outline you had it was a collection of strange appendages um, a mass of, of possibly flesh you're not sure what exactly it was it spilled cold blue blood across Valerie as she ripped into it something very unnatural. It had wailed in a, uh, a deep, sorrowful voice um, when you had struck into it from many mouths, perhaps. Um, there are an amalgamation of limbs. You're not even sure it's walking, but it has to be something is kicking up dirt. You don't know if it has feet. You don't know what exactly this thing is that is fleeing. Fleeing, fleeing, fleeing. So... First up in initiative is going to be Velvet. Question. Yes. So we're still inside the barn. You guys are technically in the barn. It has already broken out and it's mm -hmm. run through the mm -hmm. former pasture that had the ox caged in, trampled and destroyed, exploded several of them. Well, okay. there's guts and viscera all over the ground is it has just made a beeline straight towards the city of Conwich. So on my way to chasing the destruction mm -hmm. of Pat, um, can I stop by Moog real quick and search his body for healing potions? <laughs> okay. I will say that you will not be making your pursuit if you want to take your turn to do this. That's up to you. Yes, yeah, I'll okay. do it. All right, you stop at, at Moog. I'll say that it's because you're taking your turn to do this. You don't need to make a check or anything. You guys okay. have all, he's not He's not hidden his things mm -hmm. from you. At least I don't I think have, Moog I have his two. things. Right. So, and he's prone, correct? Yes. Like unconscious. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to smash one in his face. Okay. And then pocket one. And then I'm going, yeah. I'm going to take off after that. Okay. So you just kind of quickly grab them. And I'll say this is be your initial turn. Yes. You come in and you... So, Moog, you're healed for 2d4 plus 2. You can just do that whenever you want. Then, Valerie, you've got uh, one of Moog's potions. I love it. I love it. So, that'll be the technically the end of your turn for this. I got nine points of healing, and now I have three levels of you're exhaustion. Up with three levels of exhaustion. Enjoy. Um, Zoom, you will be next up in initiative order. I guess I will chase after it and make a spectacle of myself so that they can see me as I chase after it. <sighs> now, it is invisible. <laughs> um, it is making a large uh, kerfuffle on its way to the city. So it is, um, it, it's not exactly a trail that you're going to need to um, uh, like track right now. However, oh, go ahead. Uh, I will need a athletics test to see how well you can keep up with the creature at this point. You do have disadvantage. Yeah. Oh God. Or do you have three levels of exhaustion? I did not do well. Yeah. Okay, so you're already at half speed to begin with. So yeah, you're yeah, you're know. kind of hobbling your way there. You're not moving very fast at all. Is it any? Is there any chance I can do um, move and then action? Um, depends on what you want to do. I would like to cast since it doesn't matter since he's already running and. I mm -hmm. like to cast Dissonant Whispers. Okay. At the... But he would have to be within 60 feet of me. Now, do you have to be able to see the creature? It doesn't say that. It, it doesn't says... say. 
a creature of my choice within range that can hear it. Okay. Okay. What, what's the, what's the save? What's the save? It's a wisdom fifteen. Wisdom. I rolled a fifteen already. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> the, well. Plus the plus whatever it's got. I apologize. It's all right. so, no, you're it okay. It still takes uh, half damage though. It does take half damage. Yeah. So and since I'm casting that at third level, mm-hmm. that'll be five d six. So half of 13. 13. Reduced to six. Six points of psychic damage. That. You can, you kind of um, get a general idea of where it's at. Now, is this, um, is this just sing? is this crying out or is this a, uh, a bagpipe situation? I don't know if, <laughs> very sad bagpipes because yes, I'm sure I'm, I'm beat to crap. So. <laughs> <laughs> pull your, pull your. We, we need you need a name for your bagpipe, by the way. I don't know if you've got one yet. Balthrop. It's Balthrop. Balthrop. You can pull out Balthrop. Yeah. <laughs> Is it made of like human bone and stuff? That would be cool. I'm just gonna throw it out there. That would be nice. I'm down, I'm down with it. Human Spiders, testicles. Bro? Yeah, exactly. You start, you start, you, you wheeze out a uh, sonorous tone, a, a, a dirge, quick, a quick dirge, and. Um, you're not sure exactly where the creature is, so you're not sure if your intonations have uh, garnered as much as they should, but you do hear a, a cry a little bit. Good. And that will be the end of your turn, bringing me to the one and only Rogar, son of Amu. Um, let's see. I guess I will. I'm not still raging, am I? We'll say you, for now you are. You, after okay. this turn, you probably won't be. <laughs> probably won't be. Depending on um, what you do. And I will probably, <clears throat> if I can still get a general direction on where it is, mm-hmm. I'm gonna just probably try to book it as fast as I could um, towards it. Okay, um, you start. Ah, and you start running. Go ahead and give me an athletics test. Okay. Can I get advantage on that? Let me see. Okay. Uh, you do. While you're raging, you do. Okay. I think you're the only one who doesn't have any exhaustion. Jesus. Ten. Ten. Not the best. Which is... Ironic because you're so good at that. <laughs> so it's not it's not horrible. Don't get me wrong. It's average. It's average. Yeah. Um and basically what it is is you're you're having to kind of leap over a few corpses. Um some of these large ox and debris that's been scattered everywhere. Um you, you hear cries and shouts coming from Conwich itself, and you're trying to as fast as you can, trying to get Ooh. up to the creature. Yes. A question: How far is Conwich? So, th- are they are they already um, screaming beforehand? The he, before he's going down? Or well, is this... I will say that um, Conwich is about. It would be about a thirty-minute walk, but you guys are at a full sprint. It's probably not going to okay. take long, and um, perhaps somebody may have noticed the uh, the let's just say the echoing cries that are racking your guys' brains and possibly people farther away. Um, who knows what? What's happening out there? So, Rogar, you are making your way there. You're not sure. It's hard to tell if you caught up with it, but you have gained ground at the very least. Would you like to do anything else? Uh, I think that's probably all I can do. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Rogar is significantly ahead of everybody else right now. Trist. Your Chris turn. is going to pop his uh, potion of greater healing. Oh, yes. And uh, actually, this, act- this is actually a drink. Is that my action? That will be your action, yes. All right, then I will hobble 15 feet, and that will be my turn. Okay. Well, actually, no, no, we're, we're doing um, we're doing potions of bonus action for you. Bonus That's action? Fine. Yeah. Then I will hobble my 15 feet, and I'm going to start flinging chromatic orbs. 
<laughs> okay. Just so slinging them out. Go ahead and give me a attack roll disadvantage. Uh, I'm assuming it's within 90 feet of me, because that's my range. We'll say you don't know, but you can try. So go ahead and <laughs> give me an attack roll at disadvantage. <clears throat> okay, I want a natural 20. 16. 16. Ironically, we'll, we'll hit. Go ahead and roll a damage, my friend. So that will be 15 points of fire damage. Fire damage. Okay. Make sure. Okay. You you start um, basically you you kind of bring the stone out and begin to uh, to unfurl your spell and as you do oh, yeah. you see Rogar sprinting and you kind of start slaying it in his direction and as you do a beam just cascades out of pure fire and as it um, goes over Rogar's head it you you feel it hit nothing you feel no resistance in the spellcraft and then you kind of shift it just slightly and then you carve into something. Um, you hear another cry as well. I know that you have uh, you've done something. However, Trist, one thing you do notice is you guys have beat the hell out of this thing, or at least judging from the wounds and everything that you think that your companions have inflicted, it doesn't appear that this thing is going down easily. Just throwing it out, boy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That will then bring me to Mo Bracha. <clears throat> all right, all right. Well, <clears throat> uh, Moog stands up uh, mm-hmm. using half of his movement, which gives him seven and a half feet of movement now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I guess that's just seven feet of movement. So it's I will almost nothing. Take, take my seven feet of movement. And, <clears throat> and um, get, do I have, uh, how far away is the creature? You, you're not sure. You're not sure. not sure. You did see Trist. Um, we'll say it's all happening in a short span. So you, you kind of saw him throw a spell out there. And you have good eyes. You're you know you're a sharpshooter. Um, uh, so so you can probably gauge that it's probably within oof from you probably about a hundred feet or so. Okay. So what I would like to do. Let me see here. I've got where are these things? Here it is. So I have the I have these bolts of woundy. You do. I do. And so I think I would like to shoot this with a bolt of okay. woundy. Okay. You yeah. grab one of the the uh, special hunting implements. Yeah. From Clan yeah. Bradra. Load it up real right. fast. Mm-hmm. I'm that assuming you. Particular. I'm assuming you just sling your shield. Yeah. Yes. Of course. I'm not you better not carrying, drop it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not dropping it. It's good shield. And uh, yeah, the Sentinel Shield, it's good stuff. Okay. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna take a, this gives me a plus 12, but I'm at disadvantage. Yes. Okay. It's a 14 hit. All right, well, that'd be a 15 to hit. 15? Yeah. It's a glancing blow. A glancing blow, it okay, is. so that's gonna be. <clears throat> so does that, will that still stick him? Yes. With the, with yes, the wounding, it will. okay. Uh, so let me make sure what that does. Bolt of wounding um, does leads taking my wisdom bonus of damage every ten minutes until the bar of pain. Cool. Yes. So, all right. So he's going to take uh, like plus one damage every ten yes. minutes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, but here's the actual damage he took from the shot. Mm-hmm. Not great, but eight points of piercing damage. Eight. But that's magical damage, isn't it? With the bolt of wounding, or is it not? It is, but it's still glancing blow. Got it. So, so that's only going to be four. It's only going to be four. Magical mm-hmm. piercing damage. Plus, mm-hmm. I'll give you your one point of oh, uh, so five. Wo- wounding damage right now. Cool. All right. And there is, and the, the bolt itself, as it lodges in there, um, you notice that as it does, there is a, a smattering of that dark bluish blood that spills forth from the invisible creature. And as it does, Moog, as you, you, you lay in it from a significant distance, you see that there is a, a steady drip of that blue blood coming from the end of that bolt, dripping down. Possibly giving away its position. Actually, I get to take a second attack. 
You do. So I'm going to do that again. Go ahead and make a second shot. Launch a second bolt, yeah. With the same bolt or, or a regular bolt? Uh, I'm going to use one of the, a second bolt. Okay, okay. Wounding. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So that leaves me with eight. So, oh, dang. Uh, at the, disadvantage? <laughs> uh, at disadvantage, the 12 plus 12 is 24 to Woo! hit. That definitely hits. Yeah. Roll damage, uh, please. Yeah. Oh, not bad. 12. 12. Points six. of magical piercing damage plus the one. Plus so 13 the points. Yes. Now he's got two of those bad boys. He does, which That's also makes him bleed faster. Yeah. Oh, nice. Multiply. Force it multiplier. It does. Each, each one you put in a person, at the, and you would know this, Mo. Yeah. Each one of those particular bolts you start putting into people, it starts making them bleed quicker. Yeah, because it's a woundy wound. It does. Until awesome. it's removed. That is my queen. All right, that will be Moog's turn. It is the creature's turn. And the creature is, of course, going to move at a full sprint um, as fast as it can. And it moves exceptionally quick. Um, you're not sure where it's... Well, uh, you're, you, Rogar's the closest creature to it. And Rogar, you just feel this burst of just energy, this longing. You're not exactly sure what it is. You hear cries, and something about him is, it, it's disturbing, it's unnatural. However, it's also vaguely familiar, which is might also be concerning in and of itself. Um, however, as it is sprinting away, it is going to... You guys can't see what's happening. All you see is it looks like in the middle of this space, suddenly something opens up. And it looks like perhaps teeth have opened up. And you can see the inside of something, the inside of a mouth. And as it as you see this, Rogar, you being the closest. And then I believe the next closest would be would actually be Trist. Yeah. Yep. Because it's everybody in a 60-foot line. Well, let, let, let me roll real fast just to see. Yeah, it's Trist. So, Rogar and Trist, I need you guys to give me a uh, dexterity saving throw. Yeah. I'm, I'm the second fastest at half, half speed? You are the second closest besides just Rogar. Oh, shit. That's the natural 20. It's good for you, Trist. Good, good. I think I have to check. Yeah, it's only ability checks, so mm -hmm, that's a natural mm -hmm. twenty. I believe. Yeah. Don't you have advantage? Oh, you do. That is an advantage. Damn. <laughs> damn. Damn. Sorry, Rogar. Um. All right. Um. So here's what's gonna happen. Uh. Where is it? There it is. Rogar, you are going to take 16 points of acid damage as there is a, a violent spray that comes out as this creature just goes, Wah! and then there's like a belt of acid that flings out from behind it. I mean, completely just cuts across you, Rogar. And then Trist, you take half. So you take eight points of acid damage as it splashes against your sides. You kind of try to, you kind of dodge out of the way, but not quite fast enough. And the creature is moving. You would, and you feel like at the speed that it's moving, it is going to take one more turn before this thing gets into the city itself. You hear screams and cries from the city walls at this point. Um, people screaming. Uh, yeah, it's it's getting intense. And you guys are all moving at a very fast speed. So let's see here. Brings me to the top of the round with Velry. Uh, well, the only thing I can do, run after, run after it. So I have 45. Uh, yes. Yeah. How close is just curiosity? How close does that get me? I have no idea how far away it is. But well, I can't see the blood trail. Okay, that is true. It is bleeding now. Mm. All right, you were still in the barn. Mm -hmm. We're going for more cinematic anyway. Mm -hmm. 
I'll say that you're able to catch it this turn. You can oh, get yeah? to it with your movement. Oh, yeah? If you, if you dashed, you'd have to dash. Which would... But I still get one action after that then, right? Uh, no, you okay. no, it's you'd be your action to dash. I don't have two act. I have... You have two attacks, not two actions. Oh, okay. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. I will dash and then bonus action release a snake. I think. Uh, okay. So far. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Bonus action release a snake. Okay. Ah. <laughs> okay. Now, the snake doesn't shoot out of it. You realize that, right? It's not like a missile. <laughs> it's not like a missile. Are you are you sure? Because I think it's it could not. be. It sounds like it shoots it's out. It's not. Yeah. I'm if I, sure. you know, dashed up there, got yeah. within range, and then released my snake, and it has thirty feet range. I'm just saying. Your your, your snake has a thirty foot range. You're really, really or thirty feet this. Uh, speed. I mean, really pushing oh. this. Okay. So, all right. I tell you what. Give me a, just give me a melee attack roll. You do have disadvantage because the thing is invisible. For the snake or? No, no, uh... this is just gonna be to see if you can launch the snake onto the creature. <laughs> okay. Just a normal, okay. You said disadvantage? It is a disadvantage, the, the thing is invisible. Okay. 21 at disadvantage. Dear God, how was that? How is, how is that possible? Yeah. Impressive. It definitely does. It uh, so you 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 manage to dart up painfully fast. You kind of rush past Rogar. Mm. This is one of those Captain America on your left scenes. He's, oh, he's, oh, he's all recovering from being burned. As you as you pass him, um, you move up to where you think the creature is. You guys are getting dangerously close to Conwich at this point, and. Um, just at the very tip of your stride, you see that the creature's going to pull away at any moment. And you grab a hold of the white robe that you wear <laughs> over this that has two remaining snakes on it. You grab a hold of one of them and pull free the um, the the snake that has been enlaced magically into the fabric. And then as you do, you sling it and you see as it wraps around some kind of massive leg barely wraps around it some kind of appendage of some kind um and the snake is on the creature right now all right all right that'd be the end of your turn probably yes okay um does the snake go immediately after you does it say on the robe oh i was like that's up to you uh, um it might, it might actually specify. I think it might. Let me go back to it. <clears throat> How's that bonus action? Transforming. Mm -hmm. And acts on your initiative count. Your initiative. Okay. Well, then next turn, it will, it'll act okay. what you do. Okay. So, all right. That will then bring us to Zoom. We we're falling okay. behind. Desperately. I will run after everyone else okay. and... Um, use my bonus action to throw I mean, I guess Rogar's next so I'm going to throw some Bardic Inspiration on Rogar next Okay, okay. but I'd like to use I guess my action and my move to try to catch up Okay. go ahead and give me an athletics test please uh, you have disadvantage don't it have to be athletics it does, that's <laughs> the fast thing that makes you go fast <laughs> that's Not already good. bad enough yeah I'm a negative one in athletics. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, so, oh. yes, Valerie. Question. I think of bardic inspiration. She or Zoom gave me bardic inspiration a while back that I never used. Does that? Do I still technically have Was it? Have that? Was it while you were in the barn, or was it before that? Hmm. I don't. Do you remember Zoom? I don't remember. Uh, oh. God. oh. It was before. I think it, it would have been before. before. Okay. It, yeah. it, it lasts okay. for 10 minutes. So oh, it would yeah. have been, been gone by now. Okay. Okay. So Zoom's desperately trying to keep up. Rogar's just at the very tip of your vocal range. All you have left in you right now. You kind of. You got it, Rogar! <laughs> got it. Coughing He's up planned. a little bit of, of blood, <laughs> panting. You know, so much, so much, so much running. 
Tripping um, over ox dung. Exactly. It's not pretty. Exactly. And then Rogar, you will take a uh, D10 or D8, excuse me, inspiration. Uh, speaking of Rogar, it's your turn, Rogar. How close am I? Do you, I think you can see now? Velry, you, you see Velry. Velry actually is like mid, mid touching the creature, wrapped a snake on it. So you do have a visual at least. Now the creature is still technically for mechanical purposes. Yeah. It is invisible. Um, well, I know where it is at least. You at least have a good. You have a good sense of at least where that limb is. Um, okay. Now this thing is massive, but uh, but mm -hmm. yes, Rogar, um, you can you could catch it easily this turn. Okay. I need a dash to catch it. No, no, you do not. Because uh, your speed's forty feet, right? Yeah, forty feet. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, you can catch up to it. All right. I will. I guess it doesn't matter. Because invisible monsters get advantage on attacking anything. Yes, right. they do because they're invisible and you right. can't see them. You can't see them. Might be how no. Mo got kicked in the chest real hard. Yeah, uh, I will uh, <laughs> bonus action rage again. Yeah, kind of get again. it up. Oh, yes, I, I will run as close as I can. Mm -hmm. I think it's general area. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of aim around the snake, I guess, and uh, recklessly attack with okay. my great club. All right, so just a straight roll since it is invisible. I'm actually. I'm going to use Great Webmaster. I'm going for it. I'm okay, for go it. for it. Go for it. Why not? That's pretty good. Uh, that would be 20. 20 um, hits. Okay. All right. Go and roll damage for me. That will be. Nineteen. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one points of damage. Woo! Yeah. As you oh, and you come in low, right past Velry, and you smack. And as you smack into the the creature, you feel a cracking of something, maybe bone. You hear it almost like the shattering, almost like a tr when when someone fells a tree. There's an explosion, mm -hmm. and, and the thing, uh, the the horror cries out. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay. Play it back. You need another attack roll. Uh, Twenty. Enough. Enough. It Twenty. Hits. Yeah. It hits. I know. It hits. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Uh, Thirteen. Uh, Twenty-three points. Of damage. Three points of damage. Laying it on. Mm -hmm. A a second one as you kind of go out for the same limb. You swing and you don't feel anything. And then you manage to hit something else. You're not sure what it is, but there is another, another wailing cry as you smack into something else hard. All right. So, uh, so that's, that's, your turn that's, yep, that's it. That's my turn. All right. That will then lead us next in initiative to Tristan Varel. I'm assuming I can only dash. And it dis unless you got something more. with extreme range, no, I have to dash, okay. and that will be in my turn. Okay, yeah. So as you're moving up, and for thematic purposes, I'm taking your guys' as movement speed is like how fast you're able to run with this thing. You're not exactly like 20 feet away. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense to me. That's all that matters. Um, regardless, though, so Tristan is doing his best to keep up at a, at a dash. Go ahead and give me an athletics test. We'll see if you cover more ground than normal. Now they're natural twenty. Three. Three. So no. You're you're not you're not you're not recovering. You're not you're not moving very quick at all. Chris Tris, Tris three, is not doing well. Three natural twenties. It is <laughs> wasted. Wasted. Um that then leads us to our final member of Moog Bronchaw. All right. Bonus action. <clears throat> Second win. Yes, good idea. And the ten. Five. So that's for nine HP. Let me throw that on. Using that, using that broad jaw. Yeah. And then, uh, so uh, I'm going to use my 15 feet of movement to close a little distance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to take aim with a regular bolt. 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to use sharpshooter. Uh, okay. And uh, in my um, oh, uh, what is the other that I have? Uh, not surprise attack. The one oh. that lets me. Ambush. Uh, one of your um, superiority dice. Superiority dice. I, what's it called? I I know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Okay. All Precision right. attack. Precision, Precision attack. attack. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll that d8. Ah, oh, it's shitty. That's shitty. Son of a bitch. That's all right. You never know. Go ahead and roll. It, you're still advantage. rolling the attack at disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, so 22 plus 22 then. Okay. To hit. Does that hit? That hits. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. So 21 points of 21 damage. 21 points of damage? Yeah. All right. All right. And, uh, there's a, there's a, a, a wailing cry. All of you are yeah. hearing it. You guys are laying on like incredible amounts of punishment onto this creature. And we're, we're going to do it again. Okay. Go ahead and make your second attack. So here's, okay. So that'll be plus three disadvantage. 19 plus 3, 22. 22 will hit. Yeah. And then Dear God. Take these off. Uh, all right, so we get to add 10 more to this. Oh, fucking max damage. Oh, shit. 26 points of damage. Points of damage. All right. Moog, you watch as you plant from from considerable distance you kind of come up to uh to you kind of plant your feet and take aim and <sighs> one bolt after the other two streaming forward two baby's arms punching into the flesh of this horror as you do there's a soronious cry out loud <sighs> a wailing and slashing of limbs in all directions the creature just moments from entering into conwich proper you watch as uh, Velry Rogar, you guys being the closest, you feel the limb next to you um, give way and the creature <laughs> slides into the dirt. Just earth being thrown all over the place around you as if something was moving at high speed with a lot of mass and just fell over. As it does, <laughs> it begins to slide to a stop. However, it's the horror's turn next. And as it stops moving for a moment, Rogar and Velry, you, you, you slow down. You don't see anything. But then you hear something. Oh no. And I need you two in particular to give me a constitution saving throw. Twenty-two. Twenty-two and a fourteen for Velry. All right. Um Velry. There is a cry. And does anybody sp somebody speak some interesting languages, don't they? Trist, don't you speak something interesting? I speak a bissel. <laughs> you speak a bissel. Um no, you get you don't recognize it then at this point. Um, there's a cry out in almost language, as if this thing's somewhat intelligent. It cries out something. Um, and as it does, there is a sonic boom and a wave of black energy washes over Rogar and Velry. Velry, you are going to take 38 points of necrotic yeah. damage. And Rogar, you will take half. 19 points of necrotic oh. damage for you, Rogar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm assuming Velry is not standing anymore. I'm still standing. You're still standing. Oh my God, I'm impressed. I am mm -hmm. impressed. <laughs> and she made her save earlier in yeah. the fight. So, yeah. yeah, she has more health than the rest of us. Yeah. So a wave of necrotic energy washes over the two of you. Actually, Velry, are you does do you have resistance because of your 
heritage? Uh, not. I don't have. No. Okay. No. That, I'm thinking yeah. something else. Yeah. You're, you're fine. You're fine. All right. Um, regardless, though, there's a wave of necrotic energy watches over the two of you, and you watch as the thing stands up and begins to run to the city as fast as it can at this point. Um, Velry and Rogar, you both get opportunity attacks. Still at disadvantage. Why is an opportunity attack at disadvantage? Because it's invisible. Oh. It's still invisible. Okay, okay. Yeah. Twenty-two. Not bad, not bad. Um, I was gonna use my great weapon master. Of course you were. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I'm just saying, I'm just saying bro. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. So the four hit? No? It was fifteen, right? Uh it was fifteen. Oh, okay. How much uh, damage? 17, is point, seven, seven, 17, 17 points. 17 points of damage, Rogar. Yeah. As you as you, you feel the creature move and begin to move away, Velry's caught a little off guard. You just barely miss what you think might be a big wad of, of fleshy substance. Your claws just finding the tips, just little beads of that blue, cold blood on your fingertips, Velry. As you as you, you fall slightly short, Rogar comes in overhead. Oh, and then smacks, there's a crack and a pop. And Rogar, you were smattered with bluish cold liquid across you. Something explodes on your face, dealing massive damage to the creature. However, it still oh. moves. What about my snake? Did it get a, it's still on it, you know? Roll an attack <laughs> with your snake, please. Okay, hold on. <laughs> fine, that's fine. I'll allow it. What is the attack? Here? It's not much. <laughs> I can tell you right now, it's not, it? not a lot. Um, hit point? No, no. Two D eight plus two. Is that one? Well, at? no. You have to roll the attack first. Yeah. How do I? Hold how on. Do I... Let me find the creature. <laughs> huh? Just roll. Sure. Roll, roll a D twenty, and then. Uh, I believe this is a giant poisonous snake. Giant poisonous snake, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Good poison damage. Giant poison. There it is. So it has a plus six to hit. So it's a disadvantage, though. At disadvantage? Yes. It's still the creature's still invisible. So at disadvantage, it was 15, which is a glancing blow, right? That would be a glancing blow. So go ahead and roll damage for the snake bite. This is ridiculous. <laughs> There's nothing ridiculous about this. <laughs> there is a lot ridiculous no, with this. No. <laughs> snake bite's going to take it down. Snakes. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a it's D4. Working. Okay. I was, I was it's, a, it's a D4, D4. plus four. All right. So six points. So, of, it's poisonous damage, too, right? The, the this is piercing um oh. it's three points of piercing damage and then and the it has target to must make a dc 11 okay constitution save uh -huh, um, uh -huh. i'll roll it real fast just to see <laughs> that's one that's a 19 so it ah, passes so it takes right. no it takes no damage because that, that's not a uh half damage i'm pretty sure yeah it says or half as damage on a success half as much damage okay roll 3d6 3d6 oh Okay, okay, I see. Three, D, six. Mm. Oh, actually. Wait, what? What am I doing right now? I don't know. How many hit points does a snake have? Snake has 11 oh. hit points. It is destroyed well before ah. it can make any of these attacks because it got <laughs> hit with the wave of the <laughs> energy. <laughs> None of this happened. This thing's been dead this whole time. It disintegrated instantly. Hey, uh -huh. We already made it so far. Rude. New. Rude. Trying to sneak one in there. Rude. Mm -hmm. Damn it. Well, we'll pretend that in Velry's mind, that's what happened. You watched and witnessed your, your snake bite into the creature, but it never quite took. Get my three points back. All right. So. The creature is going to move 
And as it does, it and it just explodes through the ramshackle walls around oh. Conway, <laughs> just blows into it with its movement, just smashes through it. It crushes two buildings immediately. Two two buildings just fall over. Godfather? Oh we'll, we'll no. See. Uh, Somebody's go, house just got squished. Go, go, Godzilla. Um, <laughs> however, at the end of its turn, you hear you hear people just screaming and crying inside the city now. <sighs> people running. Um, you do see trampled bodies on the ground as it has made its way into the city at this point. And you see that out at sea, there is a, um, uh, a ruckus happening out towards the port and you watch as uh, a large ship that you guys have all seen in port for a while now is pulling away it's leaving at least it appears to be and that is the end of the creature's turn is there anything on fire not yet (laughs) he's seeing he's crushed right now um i mean just trying to stay to the form might as well might as well that brings us to Valerie. it's your turn mm-hmm. so would i be able to catch it this turn again yes okay. oh yes so i can bonus action rage yes you can okay mm-hmm. <laughs> um <laughs> oof. yeah okay we're gonna do it i'm gonna catch up to it oh let me Rage. Okay. So I'm gonna recklessly attack. All right. Now I. Okay. Yeah. Didn't you say once upon a time that I could like grapple and then bite? Like you said, I could do something. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd work with Ooh. you on this. I work with you on this. Mm-hmm. Sure. Oh no. I don't know. <laughs> what? <scared now>. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to use my claws, you know? Okay, I just fine. that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's a great idea for half a second. These are straight rolls, right? Yeah, it'll be a straight roll. <laughs> okay. 14, 14 will unfortunately no. miss. The first one misses. You do have, unfortunately, okay. three more attacks, though. So go ahead and just roll them all. 18 will hit. Go and roll the next two. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 22 will definitely hit. My god. I'm going to use a lucky on one of those. Okay. I want one more hit. So three Mm -hmm. attacks. Three attacks. Hit. Go and roll damage for three swipes as you kind of leap onto what you would think is part of it and your feet actually find purchase um, as you Mm -hmm. begin to slash into it. First one is nine points. Mm Nice. All right. Second. 10. 10. Dear God. Okay. And the third? 10. Yes. So as you begin to just like fairly slicing into this thing, you hear it, it cry out one more time and you're like standing on like moving flesh. There's limbs and things struggling past you, possibly tentacles. You're not sure what. And as you slice into it for a moment, there's a flicker as the thing goes quiet and falls to the ground. And it's visible for half a second in all of its glory as you're slicing into it and you and you see there's big giant eyes littering all over this creature and one of them's looking at you, Valerie. Oh God. And Rogar, since you are in, in the near vicinity, I will need the two of you to give me sanity saving throws at this point. Oh boy. That'd be great. Uh, 14 would be good enough. 14 and 11? Nine. A nine? Oh. I got my my seven. Seven for safety. I'm sorry. So, Valerie, you pass. You managed to, in your in your frenzy, in your rage, you managed to not pay that much attention or pay it heed. You feel a crippling, almost like like darkness begin to cloud over your mind, but then it subsides. You push through. Rogar is not as lucky, though. 
I need you to roll me a d20, Brokar. An eight. With an eight, Rogar, you actually become frightened. For the first time ever. Um, you, oh, you freeze up. And this form of frightened, you must use your action and movement to move out of sight on your turn. So just for, it's like your mind shatters for a brief instant and you, oh, oh. and that then brings me to, and I'll, I'll say this, Velry, you will have, uh, well, all of you at this point will have noticed that um, you're, you're not exactly sure what this creature is made out of, but as you're slicing into it, you see as parts of it are knitting back together. Like this thing should be dead, but it's not. And you actually see pieces at this point that are that are visible. So next in initiative would be Zoom. You're very far away, Zoom. You do yes. see the horror unfolding in Conwich though. Um, everything is being trampled. And for a brief instance, you saw like a flash of this gargantuan creature that's wallowing around in the uh, the town square at this point. Right. All right. Well, I'm going to use both my move and my action to try to catch up. And okay. I guess I will have to roll athletics. Yes, you will. Disadvantage, which we know I will do poorly on. Yep, I did poorly. Yes. And yeah. I am going to throw an, an, a bardic inspiration on to Tristan. Okay. All right. Throw an inspiration to Trist. Ooh, wee. Yeah. Rogar. It'll then be your turn. Zoom, next turn, you'll be able to make it into combat range. Uh, roll, roll, roll. Oh! oh. <gasps> and run away. Uh, and run away. <laughs> <laughs> Clutching at his head. Exactly. Um, exactly. Kind of dragging, the, dragging his great club. Oh. It, it's not hard to lose sight of the creature because most of it's invisible. So you just kind of mm -hmm. run behind one of the destroyed buildings. You kind of run, oh, and you, you kind of dirt, duck down. Um, you see that the dirty oxen is no more. It is crushed in the smithereens. Mm -hmm. There is nothing left. And there's a Dan fair Shane. bit of damage done to the Codfathers. And it looks also like the direction that the creature is rolling, that the Temple of Boel is next on the stomping order. <laughs> Um, all right. All the named places, they're just wiping them out. That's, I'm not doing that. No point staying in this town anymore. <laughs> that brings me to Trist. I will dash for 30 feet of movement. <sighs> Go ahead and give me athletics check, Trist. I, you know, Tristan's asthma is kicking in now. Um, a five. Five. Not very far. Yes. Um, I'll say that you do get with you with your full dash. You get within probably um, not immediate combat range, but you're just outside of it. And go ahead and give me an Arcana check, real quick, Trist, because you are quite invested in occultic lore. Uh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Um, you're not sure what this creature is. It is from beyond. It, it, it's something that breaks reality. However, stars. you would know, Trist, that things like this have a tether. If something that keeps them here, otherwise they would they would be ripped from reality. So there is something of that sort that is keeping the creature from being dispersed. I'll leave it at that. My turn. It's your turn. Moog. Moog's going to take his 15 feet of movement. Yeah. What? Well, don't worry about the movement. We're, yeah. we're just, we're, we're cinematic in this. Your range yeah. is so extreme yeah. that you can take shots even from extreme distance. Oh, yeah. So, Moog, before you do that, though, give me a perception test. Oh, sure. Okay. Damn it. Stop rolling the hit. <laughs> That's just a seven. You have advantage, but uh, then you have disadvantage. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's a seven. Yeah. 
Okay, Moog. You do see a flicker. Um, there are parts of the creature that are that are visible now, so you yeah. no longer have disadvantage on the attacks. Oh, cool. Excellent. Oh, but I critically failed. That's your one. Let yeah. me uh, pull a card for you. First attack, critical fail. That sucks. It does suck. It sucks a root. Let's see here. All right, that does nothing. So we're going to move on to the next card. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> it doesn't ring up. It's free. Goddamn. Okay. <laughs> um, you strain your wrist, Mo, as you pull up your crossbow, and you have to <gasps> minus a d6 to damage on your next attack. Okay. Bless. All right. Well, let me just uh, trick my second attack then. Nineteen hits. That will hit. All right, so here's the damage. Thankfully, max damage minus a d6 though. Minus d6. Yeah, let me let me pay my pound of flesh. Oh, of course, yeah. So it takes five. away five. Yeah, so, so eleven. Eleven. All right. Uh, yeah. You so much for max damage. You put a bolt in and sticks into what appears to be a carcass mode. Sticks into it. The thing doesn't even move. Oh. I don't know if he's dead though. And then you move up further. That'll be then your turn mode. It's now the creature's turn. The creature is going to stand up as it <laughs> is screaming aloud. Um, at this point, um, parts of it are becoming like various parts of it are becoming visible. Several people around you, Velry in particular, since you're kind of in this this crazy state um did you jump on the creature like for flavor or anything like that flavor i'm scared uh no <laughs> you did not okay go and give me a perception test about uh 15 wait that's gonna be a disadvantage too right uh yes because i'm gonna one level of exhaustion mm -hmm. okay 12. 12? Okay. Um, it's not hard to see. As the creature stand, begins to stand up, since you didn't want to be riding its back, you see on the top of its back, there's a pulsating mass, visible, mm. large, about the size of a wagon, that's pulsating and moving up and down, almost like the rhythm of a heartbeat. Um, As it begins to stand up, and it's standing 20 feet tall. And then it's just going to start um, slinging limbs um, all around it. Let's see here. Velry, you are within melee. So uh, 22 hits. Hits. And hits. You are going to get hit for, oh shit, 28 points of slashing damage. Which would have been reduced to 14, right? Reduced to 14. Yeah, I'm still dead. Okay. <laughs> Velry takes one across the chest as he <laughs> slices out. <gasps> it just falls down unconscious into the ground. And as these blades are scything around, and there are blades, and you can see some of them, there are actually blades at the tips of some of these appendages. These loathsome limbs are flaying about, and several just people of Conwich are just cleaved in twain. Blood splattered across the ground. Um, it makes a attack towards the Temple of Boel. Uh, 18 will hit the structure for 16 points of slashing damage. He slashes in and cleaves into the side of the building and then we'll start ripping away, screaming her out like this giant kaiju. Um, is this like a Michael Bay movie? This is almost like a Michael Bay movie. And true to Michael Bay fashion, um, it's at this point that you guys see the ship that was leaving begins to turn to port and begins to broadside the side of Conwich. And you see there are multiple cannons unveiled. 
and who knows what might happen soon. Um, might be dangerous to be standing next to it. That's going to bring us then to Valerie. Go ahead and make me a death saving throw. That's just a d20, right? Yes. Okay. And... That's a pass. Mm -hmm. That is a pass. That brings me to Zoom. You are within combat range now at this point. You see the creature is going insane. Yes. Um, I do not hope to be in combat you're, range. You're within um, your abilities range to do things. Oh, oh okay, then yeah. Yes. All right, let's see. Sorry, I thought you meant it. I was within striking range. No. Terrifying. Well, it's going after the... Da, 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 da. Okay, then... You see Valerie unconscious on the ground. Yeah, is it still within striking range of her? Is it focused on her at all? It doesn't appear to be focused on anybody in particular. Um, in matter of fact, you see it mostly just lashes out towards things that are hurting it, perhaps. And now it's gone crazy. She does have a healing potion on her. Yeah. Is there any way, if yeah, I made my way to, to her, her... Oh no, that's what I'm like, oh my god. Mm, okay. athletics to test, I'll let you get there. <sighs> or, 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 if I can make this work, if I can make it happen, if it can fail its wisdom saving throw. You could try. You could try, try to get it away from her. Okay. God. I do not want to detect thoughts on this. <clears throat> please do. No, please no. Mm -mm. All right, so roll a wisdom 15, please. Please fail. It's a natural 20, I'm sorry. Oh. It's a 22 oh. total. Why? It doesn't have good wisdom. It's okay, just... well, you take half of 21, so you okay. take 10 points of damage. 10 points of psychic damage. Psychic damage, you specifically. You kind of belt out towards it, and the creature freezes up and then falls to the ground again, more of it becoming visible. Um, mm -hmm. And so doing, many more people around it are making uh, sanity saves, including you now, soon. That's fun. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Sanity save. I'm probably going to fail that. We will see. Let's find out. Just roll a d20. Woohoo! Eh, I did not do so well. And now I'm going to tell you right now that's going to be a fail. Unless you have like a plus three. You have plus three? Uh, I, have, I think I just have a plus one. Okay. No. So that's okay. Roll me a d20, please. Oh. Hmm. 11. An 11. With an 11. All right. Um, one, two, four. Uh, your mind snaps for a moment, and for okay. the next two turns, you will attack the nearest creature to you. I'm going to be killing some people. Well, as they're going to be killing me. As you lo <laughs> lose yourself for just a moment, you kind of succumb to your to this madness that's encroaching into your mind. This uh, reality breaking event. Cats, birds, mice. Rogar. It is your turn. You are out of range of the creature, out of visual sight, so you are no longer frightened. The effect only lasts until then. So if you'd like to get in the melee, gonna, you can. Well, I'm going to take a swig of my gourd. Yes, you are. Your massive <laughs> gourd. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Take a swig. Try to heal a little. Didn't okay. you already do that today? No. That was the previous day? Yeah. Okay. Well, even then, I don't think I did that that day either. I took a, I took a healing potion. That's right. Yeah. Um. Okay. And and that's my action. So, um, I probably. I 
No, I can't do anything else. Are you I staying to... hidden where you are, or are you? Yeah, I'm probably gonna yeah. try to stay hidden or oh, oh. come to grips with yourself. Take a drink. I mean, who wouldn't? Get a liquid, liquid, yeah, liquid. Get courage, a little liquid you know? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Gonna... Oh. You watch as Zoom's like about twenty feet from you, going. Oh. It's like clutching at his head right now, losing himself, and you just kind of. That brings us to uh, Tristan Varel. It is your turn, Uh, Trist. You get within range of uh, spell business. Um, With your passive perception at this point, most of the creature is unveiled, not all of it in its entirety. Um, I will need you to make a sanity saving throw. I was waiting for that. That is a four total. <laughs> That's a four. That's a fail. Can roll me D twenty. Seven. Seven. Okay. All right. Very similar to Rogar, your mind shatters mm-hmm. for a brief moment, and you feel a creeping fear enter your body. You must use your action and movement to get away from the creature. I'll go hide behind uh, the Codfathers or yeah. whatever <gasps> was around me. Ah, and you begin to run towards, in the direction of Rogar, where he's kind of hiding out with his, with his gore, kind of saddle up next to him, <gasps> shaking with fear. Unfortunately, that's, that's your turn, Trist. All right. The large pulsing mast is definitely revealed to all at this point. Mm-hmm. It will then bring me to the one and only Moog. Yes. All right. So am I still able to stay out of danger range? You're, you're pretty good range away as you begin to move yeah. up. But at this point, the creature's revealed, Moog. Got it. So I'm going to... Sandy saving throw, Moog. What? No. Make it. I am still you're, far away. I can't see it. I'll tell you what. You can either make me an attack with disadvantage or you make that sanity save. I don't have to make attacks with disadvantage. I'm a crossbow expert. Well, if you're not looking at it, <laughs> you're going to be making an attack at disadvantage. Uh, 13. Is that for your sanity? Yeah. All right. That is a pass. Okay, good. You managed to stave uh, off the creeping in. You want that at disadvantage? Uh, no. Oh, it's a saving throw. Well, I have three levels of exhaustion. You do have three levels of exhaustion. Thank you for being honest, Mo. So that is saving throws. Yeah. It so is. let me roll that again and see is. which one's which one's worse. Oh yeah, seven. Yeah, that's much seven. more to your advantage. Yeah. That is much more my advantage. <laughs> roll me D twenty now, Mo. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, you got it. No worries. Seven. Hey, this is how the game goes, man. That's how it goes sometimes. Hmm. Uh, seven. Every time. Hey, yeah, seven. seven, seven You're bonus. also afraid, like the rest of the crew, apparently. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so no attacks for me, huh? So unfortunately, you come Mo, hang out with Rogar and uh, you kind of and no, he's he's farther back than the rest of you because um, he's been taking shots at extreme range, but you you're, you're shaking for a moment, Mo, and you kind of duck yeah. down just out of sight. And that Still is taking a, the disadvantage attack. Unfortunately, going to be your turn. It is now the creature's turn. It's going to twitch, begin to slowly stand. And with a 10, it completely misses a swipe aimed at um, one of the uh, one of the uh, other buildings here. This was the Bitter Stout Trading Company. However, it does destroy the dock in its entirety as a gangly pseudopod-like limb with like acid coating outside of it smashes into part of the docks and just shatters and explodes out. Acid dripping into the water, a steam rising from it. And the creature is lashing around still. Um, that is the end of its turn. So it's done some more damage here. Kind of which is not very well. <laughs> All right. That will then bring me to at the top of the round. We have Velry. I believe you're still unconscious. Give me a death saving throw. Natural 20. Oh, shit. You actually. 
You actually get up. Sorry. Oh yeah. With one hit point. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say one hit point. You you you're sitting there, and then we'll say that there's just a spray of blood from someone else that just crushed. And it smacks across your face and your cheek, and you mm. uh, you wake up, black eyes. Trist <laughs> isn't near, thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> So you have one hit point. However, that is that is going to be your turn, though. Ah, oh, okay. So you maybe you'll get to do something next turn. Mm-hmm. And zoom. Who's around me? Let's see here. Let me let me roll a d4 here. It looks like uh, Rogar's right next to you. Rogar. And by right next to you, I mean within like 30, 40 feet. There no, there no, there's no one else around me. It's Everyone just else is Rogar. Dead. It's oh. Rogar, Trist, <laughs> and then Velry. Um, right now, you are uh, not in your right state of mind. Okay. Well, Rogar, roll a wisdom check. A check or save? This. Save. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wisdom is happening. I don't. I'm. I'm assuming yes. I'm assuming you see. You see this begin to happen, Trist. I mean, I know. She, I know she's casting a spell. I would think so. Counter spell. Okay. Thank well, you. it does in fact. Um, and that's my turn. Yeah. If it's if it's third level, I think. Well, yeah. She, just auto cancels. So. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't cast she can't. above third level. Yeah, she so, doesn't have yeah. anything yeah. above third right now. I don't, so I don't think we have to he, roll off on it. So he right. begins to belt out some some tones towards Rogar, and Rogar, you see, Rogar begin to oh, the fear begin to take him again. So interesting. Reach out and then bend the fabric of time. And as you do, the spell just dissipates. There you go. Reaction used. <laughs> well then, used. Um, as that as that fades, Zoom, um, you kind of <sighs> begin to come to your senses. Um, however, it is the mighty Rogar's turn. Uh, does Rogar see the pulsating heart? Thing. Yeah, you kind we'll of look around. Mass. It's huge. Yeah, it's big. And it definitely, Rogar, you've slain many a beast. It's definitely mm-hmm. a heart. All right, Rogar is going to rage, his last rage, mm-hmm. and um, he's going to charge in. Charge in? With his, his great club. All right. Um, um, to hit the mass, mm-hmm. you have to climb it. Okay. And the athletics check. Athletics check. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen is just enough to attach yourself to one of the limbs. So you you ah, and you grab a hold of one as it's swinging around, and you ah, and then you fly up above it. You oh. ah, land next to the mass. Go ahead and make not your very attacks. Gracefully. All and right. Nuka Rico. Uh, that's going to be 11. That's going to miss. Oh, that's, let me let me make sure. Do you still have your bardic inspiration? He would. I do, I guess. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll roll that just in case. I feel like I need something. I think you it. So that'd be 19. That hits. You're aiming for the mass, correct? Yes. Yes. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, that will be 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage as you, oh, you carve into it or you bash into it and it, you smack. And as you do it, the, the thumping kind of stops for a moment and then still beating. It looks like it's out of rhythm, though. The creature is like, oh, freaking out now. Okay. Um, one more time. Okay. I'm going to... Uh, the, the, the mass. Does it seem like it's fading? Like it's slowing down? Um, significantly? It's beating faster now after you smacked it real hard. Okay. I'm 
I'm gonna attack, but I'm gonna do reckless and I'm gonna also do okay. great weapon master. Do it. Go ahead and do it. Oh, I miss. That's a miss. It's a... a 14 hits the mass. Well, no, it's Ooh. it's not a 14. It's oh, not a 14. Oh, yeah, great weapon, man. Great weapon five. master. So it's nine. It's nine is what it Missed is. It's the mass. Yeah. Ogar is you. Yep. you. And then you... And you kind of skid across it and hit some of the more mass. You're kind of trying to... You, you're balanced a little thrown. The creature's moving about. Fortunately, Rogar, you're left there standing, riding this creature. Yes. Hmm. Indeed. Um, that will bring me to Tristan Varel. In terms of movement, I'm going to make my way closer to the temple. Okay. Okay. But uh, seeing the events that have transpired, I'm going to fling a fiery chromatic orb at the heart. Okay. Next to Rogar. Yes. Let's hope you don't... Fa- if you miss this attack by more than five, you will hit Rogar instead. Just to throw it out there. Oh, that's going to hit. That will definitely hit. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage. Yes. Four, 14 <laughs> fire damage. How do you do this, Trist? Oh, shit. Let's so run out. Make my way over to, uh, over to the temple. Mm-hmm. Hobbling. Pull it out. Give it an extra little panache. So you know, a couple panache. more spins yeah, at yeah. second level. Uh-huh, so uh-huh. It starts to glow, and then you know, let it loose. Let it loose. Rogar just sees it fly right over his head. Yeah, goes past Rogar's head. So he's like, oh, trying to balance around here. And it pierces straight into the creature. You hear a, a cry. <gasps> and then you hear, all of you hear, and Goblinoid. Father! As it begins to fall. Oh, Rogar needs you to try to hold on here. Give me a dexterity safety throw. Oh, yeah. You, can, you, you managed to ride this thing down, okay. Rogar. You. Oh, oh, oh. However, Next in initiative order. Too late to stop. You stop, Rogar, and then you you hear something. You look over towards the ship. And <laughs> as cannonballs race out in the direction of the creature, exploding around. Um, let's see. Dick save? <laughs> let's see here. <laughs> I need a dexterity saving throw from Trist. From Velry oh, and from Rogar. No. <laughs> 19 for Rogar. 19 for Rogar. Question. Yes. I don't have to say, because I, I typically have advantage on this. But I don't. Yes. I, I, okay. Oh. Okay. Natural 20. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't want that five? Hmm. <laughs> All right, it's it's a lot. I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of damage here. Um, none of you take the full brunt as the the multiple cannon shots explode. Most of them absorbing into the actual carcass of the creature, explodes out, littering everyone in goo. However, um, you guys are all still hit with debris and velry. Rogar and Trist will all take 20 points of <laughs> piercing damage. And that was halved. It would have been 40. I rolled really high. Fuck. Rogar, Rogar is down. Rogar, 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 Rogar goes down. I think we're all down. <laughs> Rogar explodes off of the creature. Who's close? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> falls down. Valry barely gets up from being unconscious and then, and then goes back exactly. down. Trist as well, and right in the entrance of the temple. We'll say that, you know, he's able to shield the front of the temple with his body because he gets littered with debris. <sighs> mm. I shoot oh. a clown! 
smoke and zoom. Is, any, is anything witness, on fire yet? Witness this all happen. Um, the carcass appears to be on fire now. Um, it's strange though. As it begins to light, the fires quickly dim and the entire creature slowly begins to piece by piece, almost as if it is disintegrating in the nothingness. Pieces of it are floating away and grifting away into nothingness. And you guys have all survived your encounter with what will from here be known as the Conwich Horror. Mm-hmm. Take a long sleep. Uh, uh, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't feel quite as victorious as I thought. <laughs> you just killed it? Yeah. I didn't die. You know, <laughs> the Avengers don't feel like this when they destroy an entire cities. So. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yo, watch out or Michael Keaton's is going to show up. So, mm-hmm. um, I think that will be a good time for us to take our first break. We'll pick this mm-hmm. up with uh, possibly leveling up.